Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of VIT Triple E Questions with Solution, we are going to be looking at some previous year questions which were asked in mathematics. So this video is a video which you can use for preparing yourself for VIT Triple E 2021, which is going to take place soon. So this particular video is based is going to be talking about trigonometry and complex numbers, and today's episode will be purely trigonometry. And let's start off. Here's your first question asked in 2018. If 12 cot square theta minus 31 cosec theta plus 32 equals 0, then find the value of sine theta. So, how do we solve this question? Well, we know 12 cot square theta minus 31 cosec theta plus 32 is equal to 0, but then we can write cot square as cosecant square theta minus 1 because cosecant square theta plus cot, I mean, minus cot square theta equals 1. This is a trigonometric identity. So you can write 12 times cosecant square theta minus 1 minus 31 cosecant theta plus 32 equals 0. And now you just multiply 12. So 12 cosecant square theta minus 31 cosecant theta and then plus 32 minus 12 which will be which will be plus 20, and that is equal to 0. Now, how do we solve this quadratic equation? If you've noticed, cosecant, cosecant theta is now our variable instead of, say, x or y. So we have to split the middle term out here. And how can we split the middle term? 20 times 12 will give you 240. And another way you can achieve 240 is if you can multiply 16 times 15. So 6 fives are 30, 1 5 is a 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 6 1s are 6, 1 1 is a 1, 80 plus 160 gives you 240. So therefore 12 cosecant square theta minus 16 cosecant theta minus 15 cosecant theta plus 20 equals 0. So now we will take 3, I mean 4 cosecant theta common from the first two terms. So you'll get 3 cosecant theta minus 4 and then take minus 5 common from the other two terms. So you'll get 3 cosecant theta minus 4, and that is equal to 0. So therefore, you have 4 cosecant theta minus 5 times 3 cosecant theta minus 4 equals 0. So now both of these parts are equal to 0. The multiplication of both these parts are equal to 0. So therefore, either one of them is 0 or the other one is 0. So suppose if 4 cosecant theta minus 5 is equal to 0, then 4 cosecant theta equals 5 and cosecant theta equals 5 by 4. And then since we know that sine theta equals 1 by cosecant theta, you will write sine theta as 4 by 5. In the other case, 3 cosecant theta minus 4 equals 0. So therefore, 3 cosecant theta equals 4. That means cosecant theta is 4 by 3, which also means that sine theta will be its reciprocal, that's 3 by 4. So the values of sine theta in both scenarios are 4 by 5 and 3 by 4, respectively. So therefore, the value of sine theta in this quadratic equation 
will be option C, 4 by 5 or 3 by 4. So that depends on which one we take as 0. Now, let's look at this question. The principal value of sine inverse of sine 5 pi by 3. So this is inverse. That's due to a technical error there. So we need to find sine inverse of sine 5 pi by 3. Now in most cases, when you have an inverse trigonometric function and enclosing a trigonometric function, both the functions cancel each other out, and the angle inside will be the answer. That is the principal value. But in this particular case, it is not equal to 5 pi by 3. And there is a reason. Because 5 pi by 3 does not belong to the range of the sine function. So it does not belong to the closed interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. 5 pi by 3 is even beyond pi, so therefore it's beyond the range of the sine function. So if the angle inside the question is beyond the range of the inverse function, then you cannot use the same angle as the principal value. So therefore, we will write sine inverse of sine 5 pi by 3 as equal to sine inverse of sine 2 pi minus pi by 3 because 2 pi will be equal to 6 pi by 3. 6 pi minus pi divided by 3 gives you 5 pi by 3. So we just did the reverse here. And, and in this particular scenario, sine of 2 pi is 0. So therefore, the, the angle that is sine of 2 pi minus pi by 3 will be equal to sine of minus pi by 3. And the reason why it's minus is because the angle will now be present in the fourth quadrant, and in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. That is minus sine of pi by 3. So sine inverse of sine minus pi by 3 gives you minus pi by 3 as the principal value. And this time, it does belong to the range of the sine inverse function that is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So therefore, the correct value of the principal, the correct principal value for sine inverse of sine pi by 3 is not 5 pi by 3. It will be minus of pi by 3. So therefore, option C becomes the correct option. The reason being we have to align the principal value to the range of the inverse function. Otherwise, we can't use that angle as the principal value. Now, let's look at another question. Sine inverse of sine 5 is greater than x squared minus 4x. And this equation holds if one of the four conditions is correct. Which of that is correct? So, how do we start solving this question? Well, now we have sine inverse of sine 5. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take positive sine 5 as a value that is the product of two negatives. So sine inverse of sine 5 will now be equal to sine inverse of minus 1 times minus sine 5. And the reason being that um, it's it's just above minus pi by 2, so therefore this angle usually, li sine of 5 usually lies in the fourth quadrant, so minus sine of 5. So, now what are we going to do? We know that minus sine 5 lies in the fourth quadrant, and when an angle lies in the fourth quadrant, it will be sine of 2 pi minus that angle. So therefore, you'll get sine inverse of minus sine times, because it's minus 1 times minus sine, minus 1 times sine, so therefore that's minus sine. So it's minus sine 2 pi minus 5. And since there is a negative outside, you can juggle the, you can interchange the position of the terms here. 
and that will use the minus up so it becomes a plus so you'll finally get sine inverse of sine 5 minus 2 pi as the value of sine inverse of sine 5. Now the equation is that sine inverse of sine 5 is greater than x squared minus 4x. So that means 5 minus 2 pi is greater than x squared minus 4x. So that means what are we going to do? We're going to write the reverse equation. That means x squared minus 4x is less than 5 minus 2 pi. So far, so good. Now we take 5 minus 2 pi to the other side, so therefore it, it will be minus of 5 minus 2 pi. So that means x squared minus 4x plus 2 pi minus 5 is less than 0. So now we have reached this particular equation. And when we reach this particular equation, which I'll write again, x squared minus 4x plus 2 pi minus 5 is less than 0, we are going to use the quadratic formula. And for those of you who don't know the quadratic formula, if you have a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c, then the value of x is minus b plus or minus under root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is the general form of that quadratic equation. So now we need we can use this and find the value of x. So the equation here is x squared minus 4x plus 2 pi minus 5, which is c in this case. So therefore the value of x that will be equal to minus of minus b, so that's minus of minus 4, which is 4, then plus or minus, and then inside the root you have b square, that's minus 4 square, which is 16, minus 4 times a times c, so that's 4 times 1 times 2 pi minus 5. So we'll write 4 times 2 pi minus 5. And then divided by 2 times 1. So what are we going to do? In, inside the root, you can see that 4 is common between both the terms. So therefore, 4 plus or minus, and then we take 4 outside those two terms. And so under root of 4 gives you 2. So 4 plus or minus 2 times under root of, it'll be 4 minus 2 pi. And the minus goes to the other side, so that makes minus 5 as plus 5. So it'll be 4 minus 2 pi plus 5, and then divided by 2. So the reason why we took 2 out here, out of the root, is because we want to cancel out the denominator here. So 2 goes there, and, it also, and, four, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So therefore, now x will be equal to 2, plus or minus, under root of, we have 4 plus 5, that is equal to 9, minus 2 pi. So as you can see, we have got the value of x as 2 plus under root of 9 minus 2 pi or 2 minus under root of 9 minus 2 pi. So these two are the extreme scenarios. So therefore, x will belong to an interval that contains 2 minus under root of 9 minus 2 pi as the lowest value and 2 plus under root of 9 minus 2 pi as the highest value provided that both of these values are not included in the interval itself. So that means it's an open interval. So this is the correct value, the correct condition for x. So let's look at our options. We can see that among the four options, option D happens to be the correct option. This is a question which was asked in 2017. Trigonometry as itself is asked less, you know, you because most of the time it's clubbed up with complex numbers. So let's move on to the final question of trigonometry in this episode. The function fx equals sine x minus kx minus c, where k and c are constants, decreases always when k is greater than 1, k is greater than or equal to 1, k is less than 1, k is less than or equal to 1. 
So, we know that f of x equals sine x minus kx minus c. So, when we differentiate, we will get f dash x as equal to cos of x minus k. So, depending on the value of f dash of x, you will find out whether f of x is increasing or decreasing. So, when f dash x is negative, f of x decreases. And when is the scenario that f dash x becomes negative? When cos of x is always less than k. So in that time, f dash x is negative. That means f of x decreases all decreases during that time. <laughs> now we know that the maximum value of the function that is cos x will always be 1. So cos 0, cos pi, cos 2 pi, etc. So these values will always be at 1. So the cos function is a function that it is a periodic function that varies from minus 1 to 1. So therefore, the maximum value that cos x can get is 1. It doesn't go over that. So therefore, k can always be greater than 1. And even if it's equal to 1, that means it will be just 0. So from 0 to negative value, so that makes the entire function negative. So therefore, k is greater than or equal to 1 for f of x to be negative always. So therefore, option B happens to be the more appropriate option in this question. So option C and D are incorrect because when k is less than 1, then cos x is greater than k. So cos x can be greater than k, so therefore it does not decrease always. When k is greater than 1, then it is true, but then the more appropriate option will be k is greater than or equal to 1 because we have to, you know, figure out the zero scenario as well. So therefore, option b, k is greater than or equal to 1, is the correct answer for this question, which was asked in 2017. So that concludes this particular episode of VIT Triple E. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. If you want to access the VIT Triple E playlist, don't forget to click the link for that in the description box down below. To get the latest updates, don't forget to hit the notifications button, the bell icon that is below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye bye for now.